like and subscribe now what is something about the company you work for that they would not like the customer to know we store all your personal details in plain text i work for a company that sells total defense security software never bite at all defense if you care about your passwords and credit card data you think you are calling to speak to someone at the hotel directly. In reality, you have reached me, sitting at home in my PJs, watching Real Housewives on mute. In all honesty I don't care where you are, as long as you're nice, and can get me the help I want. I work for a distribution center for a large grocery chain. Always wash your food, especially your fruit and vegetables. I like to keep my immune system strong. I work in the development, fundraising office at an ivy league university everyone assumes that family money has something to do with admissions at institutions like these but i didn't realize the extent until i started working here although our officers are instructed to tell the parents of applicants that development and admissions have no contact every year my team is given a contrary assignment for every applicant we need to look up all of their alumni relatives and write a report on their relatives giving history to the school current wealth and potential for future giving. These reports go to the admissions office, to be included in the applicant's file. This effing sucks to read, annoyingly assumed this was the case. You're paying us to put your details in a form and click submit, H and R block. No, a marketing company, one of our services is setting up a Google Places account. We literally put their details into a form. Click submit and they pay us $340. One week later they're on Google Places. I was in hotels for 10 years. Hotels consider a night perfect. If they are overbooked by 2 to 5 rooms, they count on no shows to make up the difference. But they are totally okay with you not having the room you reserved. Likewise, if you booked with a third party like Expedia or Hotels.com, you are not guaranteed anything and will be last in line for everything because you're not considered a loyal customer. Very true. Currently work in a hotel. Though it pisses off the front desk agents, when we are overbooked, LPT, if you're concerned about a sold out situation, call the hotel earlier on the day of arrival, to confirm all of the details about your reservation, usually they'll put a note on your reservation, so you're more likely to get your booked room slash not be walked. If you see a lower rate on hotels.com slash Expedia, call the hotel, 9 times out of 10 we will match, or beat it. It saves us the headache of dealing with these companies. If faced with the choice of walking two identical reservations, except one joined the loyalty program and one didn't, I'll walk the one that didn't every time. I work at a radio station. Here are some fun facts. The DJs you hear are rarely live. They voice track hours ahead of time so they can go to their other jobs. Unless you're an enormously popular DJ, you'll barely make enough money to feed yourself. Hence the other jobs. A lot of the voice tracks you hear are likely from other markets. If a station is too cheap to hire more on air talent, they'll have someone from another market go over your playlist and voice track. So, if you're in Townsville, Kansas, the DJ you hear introducing that Luke Bryan song coming up may be a hip hop DJ from New Jersey making a little extra scratch. If a DJ is live, S slash he is most likely out doing a remote broadcast. If you see a DJ on the phone at an event, they're probably speaking with an operator back at the station. If you want to mess with them, wait until they start talking, like they are on the air, then yell obscenities, or whatever you're compelled to do. Even if they have a delay back in the studio, chances are the board op is an intern who's not paying enough attention to black you out in time. When a DJ says the next track is by request, they're lying 99% of the time. We just make up names to make it sound like we are engaged with the audience. The request line is often just put on hold, so that callers think we are being slammed with calls, and not just ignoring them. Every market I've worked in has done this. Every market, the playlist for the day is determined at the national level, and then distributed to every market. And yes, it's the same two dozen songs you're tired of hearing all day just shuffled up, even locally owned. Private stations use national music services to do this for them. Oh boy, could I go on. I used to work for a dish installing company for DirecTV. DirecTV would knowingly overbook appointments by the thousands of people that were just singing signing up and needed an installation. 
they would get your money, guarantee you the NFL ticket or whatever, and then give you a date. That was next week. Knowing that the reality of the situation was no tech was coming for at least a month or two. Source, it was my job to call and reschedule the appointment. I call direct every single summer and tell them I'm switching to Comcast. They ask why and what they can do to keep me as a loyal customer. I tell them every year you should reward your loyal customers and offer promotions for people other than brand new signups. So every year they just give me Sunday ticket and sometimes NBA league pass. And the bill stays the same. Direct is the only TV I can get at this location. Nowadays, say you're switching to Comcast and they'll likely call you on your bullsh that we don't recycle. Even though we use recycling bins. My old job occasionally involved us working in a concession stand. One time my boss came running downstairs and said guys, put the hot dog machine in the laundry room. The health inspector is here. We only sell pop and candy. He gave us all an extra $20 from the cash box that day. I loved that job. Why does a concession stand need a laundry room? To launder all the cash they made selling illegal hot dogs. I'm an analyst, and supposed to be an expert in my field. The reality is I don't know sh and make up most of what I do. I'm starting to think all my cowalkers are this way as well. We are just professional bullshitters. Just make sure they get their adobe breeder. We keep all the card details from our customers, even though we say we don't, and aren't actually allowed to. I used to work at a 4 star hotel. Every guest's credit card info was stored, in plain text in our database with their full name home address, ML and the CC security code. Any employee who had access to either the office or reception computer could copy it down. It would have been easy as hell to copy down all this info. Quit, wait a few months, and engage in some serious CC fraud. Especially working the night shift, when I'd literally be in the only employee in the entire hotel. So I wouldn't have to have worried about being caught copying down information. Used to work at, I think we all know what that means in this case. Have fun on vacation. Hallmark. I'm not a hot girl in your area. I'm an average looking man in Yorkshire. Someone died here, when he was left alone. A person was supposed to be watching him at all times. What type of business? Rehab hospital. One of those steak houses with the peanuts. Our steaks are of a lower quality grade than the ones you get at the grocery store. All the dough we use to bake is made in a factory and delivered during the day for us to bake at night. Panera bread baker. Shh, I should have done an amour or something. People are way more interested than I thought. The soup is frozen and brought in as well. Yep, although it's still damn tasty, I don't judge Panera for it. It's just fun to watch the tears flow, because people thought they were getting all natural. Like we grow lettuce on the fine roof or something. The dough's still pretty fresh, and we still bake in-house. There just isn't enough time to make everything in-house. University of Phoenix admissions rep and former UOP instructor. You don't have a jet. No problem. My boss knows a guy that can get you a jet in 3 days for $100. No test needed. You are worried about tuition costs. No worries. We will get you all the grants and loans you need. Deferment is a wonderful idea. You need cash now. No problem. I can make it so you can a few extra thousand dollars from your student aid by misrepresenting your income, dependence, and ethnicity. Scared that college will be hard and time consuming? No. For $100 a class, I can give you an email address to someone who will log in as you, post discussions, do your assignments, with a minimum of a B grade, failing a class, and scared about getting expelled. Tell the dean of the school that your instructor told an off-color joke about racism, sexism, or RE. Automatic A. Concerned about finding a job after graduation? No problem. We have several outbound call centers that cannot wait to hire you, so you can call people to collect money from them. Don't want to work at a call center, as I have been told by dozens and dozens of recruiters. If you mention that you have a degree from any for-profit school, UOP, Kaplan, DVRY, etc., your resume is thrown away. Think the government will shut us down. Ha. University of Phoenix spends millions of dollars to lobby senators and representatives to not look our way. Instead shut down the smaller colleges. Corinthian is the latest victim. I always love the statistics. 100% of our graduates have a job within the first year. Majored in English. Call center. Majored in math. 
Call center. Majored in design. Call center. Majored in nothing. Just had a worthless degree. Call center. It's easy to get 100% employment. When your students realize they are effed for finding a job. And you offer them a job they can't refuse. Where do I sign up? To make $100. And get people B grades. Every time one of my friends tell me they are going to go to a for-profit school, I cringe. You can go to a community college for half the price, and get an actual accredited degree. For-profit colleges are some of the scummiest businesses ever. The amount of money I see wasted here is astounding. There's a place called the RPAT yard where they shred slash incinerate everything in an effort to reduce US presence in Afghanistan. It doesn't matter how expensive or reusable it was, just destroy it, so we don't have to worry about sending it home, or finding someone to sell it to, MRAPs, for example, cost about $500,000 for a vanilla truck, there is an endless field of them on Bagram waiting to be shredded, and sold for scrap, they weigh in at about 30,000 pounds, and are sold for 93 cents slash pound, call it $30,000 of scrap metal, even though it's probably a lot less, I guess the customers are taxpayers, leave them there, we'll be back in a couple of years. We find weapons and drugs all the time, and are encouraged to just dispose, and ignore and not report it, just throw the ack in the dumpster and we can go split this 8 ball of coke, sound good. I work at a popular coffee slash donut chain in Canada, called Tim Hortons, almost everything we serve in the restaurant comes from frozen, soups, chili, donuts, muffins, chicken, steak, buns, croissants, and danishes, there is much more trust me, I just find it ironic, that the place, that prides itself in their always fresh motto, is anything but, don't worry, we all know, and as long as you don't run out of Boston cream donuts, we are cool with it. I work for a defense contractor, that specializes in basically doing the thinking for the federal government. We are paid via no bid contracts, because we save them money. We rarely work more than 2 real hours in a given day. I bring beer to work for the whole office, home brewer, once a month and people get hammered, and then return to work. We have a 59 minute rule that basically says you can charge anything to main work, so long as it's less than a full hour. Analytical tools I create, recycle the same core code over and over, with small changes. We code in MATLAB, we regularly talk about how fine stupid the government is for paying us so much. My first month I was told to slow down on completing tasks or there wouldn't be any work available for me to charge to and that would look bad for everyone else. The markups on products tend to exceed 2000%. Used to work at the Levy flagship store in San Francisco. We had a pair of the oldest known Levy in existence, framed on the wall in the boutique, and every now and then some out of towner would come in boasting about how rich they were, and how Levy represents the American dream, yada yada, and demand the rarest thing in the store as a memento. We were told to direct them to the torn up old jeans on the wall, and tell them they were from the 1880s, and had been found in a barn in the early 20th century. They would then fork out 1500 bucks or so and be on their way with their refed up jeans, and we would replace them with another copy from the storeroom. Now that I think of it, Levy would probably like people to know about this, what with all the assimilated working class propaganda they used to sell their pants, distraction from the more evil sh- Unfortunately, I haven't been to a sweatshop, so those stories will have to be left to someone else. I desperately hope there is someone reading this with one of those pairs of jeans just saying god damn it, right now. If you bother us long enough point you get free sh- Ferrari. Close point just subtract the average cost of a Ferrari by dollar sign 85k to reach the average cost of our items. If you shoplift at our store, even if we see you doing it, you can walk right out with the item and we aren't even allowed to accuse you of it. I know Hollister and Abercrombie have this same policy. My cousin used to work at Abercrombie, and she told me that someone got fired, got super bugged, then went around telling everyone this policy. Well, this mall was in a really bad part of town. 
so you can imagine what happened next. She said it was pretty much a stampede of teenagers going crazy. She and her coworkers locked themselves in the back and called the cops. They even tried taking the noose off the wall. I worked at a JCPenney where this was pretty much the policy. See somebody steal right in front of you. Meh. Let them have it. Who cares? A guy stole a bunch of stuff once in front of an employee and then threatened to stab her. Store management knew about it and they refused to even ban the guy from the store. He probably still goes in there and steals. We keep track of all our inventory on a giant erasable whiteboard. There is no other place physically or virtually to obtain this information. Literally someone could randomly walk by and force us to recount thousands of tiny parts. I work at a robotics company and our customers are various hospitals all over the country. The thought of this makes me want to cry. Someone bring in a laptop with Excel point anything point anything but a whiteboard. Or at least take a cell phone picture of it every so often. The only time we ever follow our process to a T is when we are being audited. Aha, you work for a company in the world as an audit firm. We also only follow our process to a T when we are being audited. It's a big old circle. Pizza Hut uses literally a cup of oil in all of their pan pizzas. There's an oil sprayer device in the kitchen that sprays a cup of oil into the bottom of the pan before you put the frozen frisbee of dough into Thor. Is it wrong? that I think that sounds good. No, it just makes you loyal Pizza Hut customer. Stating the obvious, but investment bankers are not valued for some magic financial skills, only for their relentless salesmanship, work ethic and vast network of connections due to the hours put in. Any keyboard monkey can do a standard financial model or structure the optimal deal. A Walmart in the Inland Empire area of Southern California, I'm using a throwaway because as much as I hate it, I actually do need this job. Hazardous waste disposal bins are located one foot away from a rack, used to store food products. This is not an exaggeration. Televisions and other sensitive, high value electronics are often dropped on the ground. No inspection is ever made to see if the product is damaged. Employees are forced to use an unsecured two feet wide metal ramp to unload trucks because the store refuses to pay to have the docking ramps repaired. Several injuries and close calls have already happened. Employees often do not report serious injuries for fear of management retaliation. There is a cockroach infestation near and in the food storage coolers. An alarmingly large number of employees have had to go on medical leave because of severe reactions to insect slash spider bites. Somebody there needs to sack up and anonymously call OSHA. Most of this thread is money gouging or frozen food. It sounds like somebody there is going to die. About 99% of our products are available through Amazon for cheaper prices. I work at a major chain restaurant with the word grill in the name. There is no grill, and all of the sides, veggies, mashed potatoes, etc. are microwaved. Macaroni grill. Everyone knows you can't really grill macaroni anyway. That all our passwords are the same or just a variant in numbers, we can all access each other's accounts, and if we don't we just ask for the password, it makes life easier for when somebody is on holidays and only he has a specific access to fix a problem, for example, the only reason we do this is, because security is so tight and the deadlines are so awful that going through the right paperwork to grant temporary access would cost us money, because it takes too long. Now, no biggie you'd think, but I work in it, and our clients are some of the biggest in aerospace industry, they take security very seriously, if I was savvy enough, I could easily plant a backdoor in one of the programs through the account of someone higher up, I could stop a missile launch, costing millions, or find out the administrator's password and sell it on the black market to terrorists, making myself millions, welp. You'll be disappearing shortly. I'm behind 7 proxies. Welcome to the world of it. You literally hold the keys to the kingdom. Yet, people assume you're there to fix their printer. Macup Company. The counter girls at department stores sometimes work 8 hour shifts ringing up purchases, going to the bathroom, eating lunch, texting, and doing numerous Machiavas for customers. Let's just say a lot of those girls don't believe in regular hand washing. TL. Doctor scrub your face with Clorox, after you go to the clinic counter, I never would have thought of that point Ooh, there's not sinks readily available, so they probably rely upon hand wipes slash sanitizer if even, I worked at Sephora, 
and I washed my hands a lot, and always used sanitizer immediately, before touching anyone's face. Do other places not enforce this? I know Ulta doesn't at least point I got my Macup done there once, and it was disgusting. Price is $2.57. We up it 0 0.30 cents. Then put a new tag on it saying new lowered base price, which would be $2.75. I think most grocery stores do this. I've noticed if something costs X they will mark it as 2X. Then label it buy one get one free. Everybody falls for it. I work in a private clinic. Our employers pay kickbacks to doctors from other medical institutions to send their patients to us for a scanning. It costs us approximately $0.05 to make our product, and we sell it for up to $8. Popcorn. I worked for a small aerospace company that produces aluminum and titanium components for Boeing, specifically for the 787 plane. We had barely competent people working the CNNs that checked the part tolerances. The entire company was run like sh constant shouting and arguments daily. Incompetent management who hired teams to save money. Knowing there are 787s out there with those parts on them scares me. Boeing tests the parts, I can assure you, yeah, they check the fake parts. The only time that a supplier will get a return is, if the hardware doesn't fit in assembly, then they get checked. Source. 7 years in aerospace fabrication with multiple big name customers. The roast beef is not actually rare, it's well done, and dyed red. Most of the menu at Applebee's I've cooked in the microwave. Applebee's, for when you are too lazy to microwave your TV dinner yourself, and don't mind paying 5x the price. I'm pretty sure all of the customers know this already, yup and I still go, that's all on me. Hopefully this doesn't get buried not, because I want the karma, this is a throwaway, but because of how much danger your pets could be in. I used to be a groomer at a fairly famous grooming salon. It wasn't anything you would see on TV, but it was very well known. If there's no window, where you can watch the pets being groomed at every stage in the grooming process, choose another groomer, at the salons, that don't have any way to watch. The groomers will have all kinds of excuses like oh, it's distracting for people, to watch me groom and such. Don't listen. Yes, in some cases this is true. In my case it's, because the animals are being treated like sh, and they don't want you to know how rough they are on your companion so why take the chance? Behind closed doors, with no one able to watch, I watched some of the best groomers in the country groomers who had friendships with their clients spanning 10 plus years. Do all of the following over the month I worked there. 1. Punched a snapping dog in the face, and broke his tooth. Then claimed the dog did it himself. 2. Squeezed an aggressive chihuahua by the throat, until he passed out due to lack of oxygen, so he wouldn't be able to fight off the groomer as she picked the hair out of his ears. 3. Sprayed ungroomed waiting animals, that were barking in their cages with a pressure hose, to make them shut up. 4. Slammed cats against the wall all the time too many times to count. 5. Lifted a dog by a leash around his neck, to choke him into submission, because he was resisting getting into the tub. 6. Didn't vince out a dog's eyes right away, when he got shampoo in them, because it serves him right for being an a-hole. 7. Deliberately cut dog's nails so short they bled to punish them for being difficult, when the dogs were inevitably really freaked out upon being returned to the owners. The groomers would present bite marks they got from another dog as evidence, and would say something along the lines of I love dogs, so don't worry about it, but he got me good. They would use the same bite for multiple dogs, to prove to the owners, that their dogs really were the problem. Not to mention scaring the owners into avoiding an investigation as to why their dog is having a meltdown for fear of getting in trouble for having a dangerous dog. TL. Doctor if you can't watch your pet being groomed, choose a different groomer. I used to work in the fruit veg section of Morrison's a supermarket chain in the UK. My job was to walk around checking the sell by date on items and collect those going out of date the next day, as well as selling carrots, apples, potatoes etc. in 1 kilogram bags. We also sold them loose, so that people could buy just one or as many as they needed. I think this is the same for supermarkets in the US but maybe not. Anyway, the majority of the loose produce you buy, has just been emptied out of a pre-packaged bag, that has gone past its sell by date. I work for a store that primarily sells DVDs and CDs. They would not like you to know that there is something called the internet. 
I just bought a blockbuster store for $10,000. I'm going to be my own boss, man. I'm going to roll in the money. When Halloween comes around, I can't find point Turner and Looch. Where is Turner and Looch? App. I retouch and repair graphics for things like pictures, documents, books etc. A lot of times the book covers will be especially tricky, so I hide dicks in the graphics, so I can recognize my work in the wild. You can google almost all the answers to your online exams. I often find the exact questions on Yahoo Answers, usually in posts that are over 3 years old. It's amazing to me that somebody would sit down during an online exam and just shamelessly and painstakingly repost each question to Yahoo Answers.